some train wrecks thing. This is from train wrecks. Um. I am fucking exhausted. I don't think I've been this productive for like five years. Like I'm talking, wake up at 6 a.m., 7 a.m., meeting, appointment, uh, 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 another meeting, take my car across town to get it shipped to another fucking state. I like, I just got home like an hour and a half ago or some shit, bro. Like I was going to pass the fuck out, but there's no option for that because my computer gets shipped out tomorrow, which means I have to stream tonight for our last stream in Texas for a while. At least we'll be back, right? We'll be back, but I am fucking fried. It's absolutely crazy. And to those couple of you in chat, I know some of you say it to bait, good for you, but to, to, man, to some of you guys, it really triggers the fuck out of me. Like, you look coked out. Listen, you fucking virgin anti-social fucking clown. The video is about train wrecks. Talking about socialism. You don't know what the fuck coked out looks like okay just because your mom comes home with three different dudes every night to make a quick dime to feed you doesn't mean you know what the coked out means dickhead this does not look coked out you understand you want an example of coked out it's literally xqc every stream every day that's coked out this is something like heroin out or something like that that's what this is this is percocet this is oxycon this is not coked out so if you're gonna make a drug reference at least get it the Right, you anti-social Minecraft 12-year-old fucks. Holy f pissing me off. Already got me fucking back. Already got me back fucking what? First fucking stream back three days in? Shameless, bro. You look coked out like shit. Shameless, bro. Absolutely crazy. Bro, I was in the shower on a positive note. Dude, I was in the shower, bro. Listen, I thought of the most genius shit. Like, I could see this quote being written down, immortalized, and told or like lived by in like 500 years, if we survive, right? You ready for this? I thought about this today, right? Oh my God, I was in the shower when I thought of this. I was like, holy f I gotta say it, you know, and copyright this shit, like by saying it live. Are you ready? Socialism without action is just another form of capitalism. This is literally true. This is literally true. Literally true. Look at fucking bread too. If you want an example of that, look at fucking bread tube. So true. Think about that. That is some fucking, that is some fucking Gandhi shit. Think about that. You can question mark that all you want, but if you think about it, it is the most on point thing in the world, bro. I thought around the shower randomly. I was taking a shower. I don't know where it came from. I think I was, uh, I got dropped off by this guy. He like just moved here from Africa and he was like talking in the car. Uh, he was my Uber driver and he was talking to me and just kind of going on about how he's just, you know, working Uber so we can save up money so he could fly back to Africa once the COVID stuff ends and, you know, just see his family. He got like emotional, just like really like I could just tell just good dude, fucking great vibes. And yeah, I asked him how much the plane ticket was and you know, with like the place he needs to go and the clearance he needs, it's, it was like $1,600 with like everything. So I just gave him 2K and he just started crying on the spot. And I was taking a shower and that just popped in my head, right? It's like, I'm a capitalist with like socialist intentions. And then I thought of the opposite, right? I was trying to think of what the opposite was. Cause I, at first I couldn't think of what I was. Cause I, I always just say I'm a capitalist, right? But realistically, like there's no shot. Like I can be a capitalist. Like there's no way. I'm pretty sure my money out is more than my money in, right? I'd be I'd be smacked up the head by a fucking capitalist, right? But what the fuck are you doing? So I was in I was in, I was in the shower thinking about these things. I, I think that's how it came up. I think that's how it came up. It was some shit like that. But I'm telling you, if you think about that, right? Social socialism without action is just another form of capitalism. If you think about that, right? If you understand that, right? Because if you just if you just preach it and you talk about it, you're making money off of it. You're gaining popularity by it, like the yeah i'm gonna comment on this i'm gonna let him finish though dude this is deep shit this is literally true poor and the average right but if you don't follow through with any action and give a piece of yourself give something that kind of follows through with everything 
then it's just another form of capitalism, right? It, it's a business model. And if you think about that really deeply, I, I think I, that's a quote where if you really understand it, I'm telling you, this shit's gonna be set in 500 years. No fucking cap. You fucking, uh, I'm not, I'm not even kidding. So sauna is a capitalist. I, I mean, I'm gonna keep it a buck 50 mods. From now on, anytime uh, we have like five or six crossover viewers that try to create drama, um, whenever a streamer talks about anything at all, uh, just permaban them. Like, per just get the get them the f out of here. Before we permaban you, I'm gonna give you guys a little word of advice to you. Uh, what, what's your name? Kruki, Kruppy, whatever the f your name is, buddy. Listen, wait, no, that's the wrong guy. Oh, that was the wrong guy. My bad, Kruki. You know what I'm saying, my bad, bro. <laughs> Shit, my bad. <laughs> Listen, guys, streamers should be able, should be able to have an opinion and talk about something that's r just random that comes up from something entirely different without you guys ha having to create some weird fucking thing. Do you understand? If that's what you thought of when I said what I said, then I'd suggest you either talk to a psychologist or I'd suggest you maybe petition for him to get one of those, you know, pocket pussy cocks that are formed after his cock and you put it on your seat. And in, and in order for your computer to turn on, you have to sit on it. Let the whole nine inches really fucking just loosen up your ass before your computer turns on. But stop doing that. Okay, I give an opinion. Stop trying to fucking bring up weird shit. Fucking drama frogs, bro. On another note, I was uh going through some like law. This is like another note. It's not okay. Let me actually respond to what Trainwreck said because I think he said it some some pretty deep shit. Um, <clears throat> so I know a lot of us understand that you know when people say like, oh, how can you be a socialist when you have an iPhone? And we obviously know that's wrong. Um, but I do think I do think that um. If you're on Hassan's level or Vosh's level or Destiny's, well, Destiny's not a socialist, but if you're on that level, can you really be a socialist and simply not really do anything with all this attention and money you're getting? I think it does come to a point where you do have to decisively put not only the money, but the attention that attention you're getting towards something real and concrete now train wrecks use the example of charity i don't think but here's where i might disagree with train wrecks first of all charity is a beautiful thing when vosh donated and raised money to uh for the the palestinian uh, children's relief fund that was a, a great thing uh, excellent you know he should uh, be applauded for that that was a great thing you know um using his platform for a good cause like that that was a good thing but um, charity is not the primary form in which I think you have socialist action. In my view, the action that Trainwrex is talking about isn't primarily charity, but it's using your money and your influence and your attention to build real political parties and movements and fulfill real socialist political ends. And that's what you can really say about people like Hassan and Vosh. They've built a huge platform. They've raised a lot of money with which they could put towards a third party. Not a lot of people know this, but the Justice Democrats who created AOC and many others started out from the Young Turks. The Young Turks used their money and their platform and Kalkulinski to create the Justice Democrats. Are you going to do that if, if I get big? Yes. And this is how I'm going to explain what, what do I think is the appropriate like order of, if you're like out here calling yourself a socialist or a communist, how should you be using your money? The first thing you need is a simple reproduction, right? You need to be able to subsist you need to be able to secure the conditions that allow you to stream in the first place so you have to raise money to feed yourself to clothe yourself to shelter yourself and have the time to stream in the first place then you need to use the surplus from that toward expanding your stream expanding the extent of your viewership because the goal is to get bigger eventually you're going to reach a roadblock where you will not be able to grow any bigger because you've secured 
your passive uh, media demographic. I think Hassan's reached that point. I also think Vosh has reached that point. At that point, all of the surplus money you're getting, they just it seems like they're just pocketing that shit and they're using it for personal reasons. In my view, when you get to that point, that's when you should start putting the money toward real life politics. So first, you fulfill the conditions that allow you to stream. Because if you don't do that, you're not going to even be able to fucking stream. And you're not going to be able to be a socialist, right? How will you broadcast your message as a socialist if you don't have enough money to support yourself? How can you continue? You're, you're done. Your voice is silenced. And you're allowing other narratives and the mainstream media and the billionaires to have their voice dominate. You know, that's why I kind of uh, disagree with a lot of the people who are like, oh, how, you're a socialist, then why are you collecting money? And, you know, why are you doing this business model? Because this is a business. It's a business model. Streaming is a business. Media is a business. It's a business. It's a way of getting money, right? So it's, it is a business. Um, just like the newspaper was a business for the Bolshevik Party, right? So when people say things like... Um, you know, oh, how could you be a socialist? Isn't it hypocritical to be doing that? I disagree with that because you need money to be a socialist. You, you know, uh, you need money to broadcast your message. You need money to reach the masses. You need money to be able to even exist and be relevant, you know, because the ruling class has money. So what? You know, uh, we should just be poor and, you know, but that's not socialism. That's more like religion. That's more like... Uh, some kind of a religious saint or something you know that's like christianity or something it's not socialism right socialism is about winning state power uh on behalf of the proletarian class socialism is about a political class struggle and an economic class struggle uh to wrestle power from the ruling class and uh seize the state power that's what socialism is actually about um, uh, it's, you know, so I disagree with when people say that, but I also don't agree with the very opposite extreme, which says that, oh, well, yeah, I, you know, I could just be a millionaire passively just accumulating money and doing nothing with it as a socialist. If, and the reason I, listen, if you were just getting millions from trading on the stock market and you're calling yourself a socialist, you can't. I think you can do that and it wouldn't be hypocritical. But if you're getting your money and your brand is inherently tied to your politics, that's when I think you have to start, you know, second, you should start questioning it, you know, because it's like Hassan doesn't earn money from the stock market. Hassan doesn't earn money because he opened a business. Hassan doesn't earn money because he's like a talented businessman. Hassan earned money because he's a political media streamer. And his politics, according to him, is democratic socialism. Same with Vosh. You know, how can these people earn all of this money just for what? To tell people to go vote for Biden? If you're a social, you know, and it's, it's so disgusting because people like Vosh and Hassan will say shit like, well, we have to vote for Biden because we have no other choice. There's, no, you do have a choice because you have you yourself alone have a huge platform and a huge amount of disposable income that can go towards literally building political alternatives. It's not going to like... um fulfill every need of that political alternative but it's a good it's a good step in that direction it'll definitely kickstart political projects political ba you know it's not going to be enough you you obviously need small donations but it'll it can start something it can it's definitely they definitely have enough clout and money to start something so instead of complaining that you have no other choice you they can they literally have the power to create another choice. That's what I'm trying to say. Like they act like they're not culpable. But they actually are culpable. They literally are culpable. They're actually culpable. 
in um, this state of politics in America because they could be using their own big platform toward um, realizing their political position in reality. They can't just say, oh, reality is over there and I'm here. No, you are now responsible for reality because you have such a big platform. You can influence that reality. It is within the realm of your possibility to influence the very reality you're complaining about. You know? So, I'm not saying that they have an obligation to do charity. But if you're building your brand off calling yourself a socialist, I think people should question your socialist credentials when you're not using your brand to concretely advance uh, socialist politics. If, if, you know, Vosh will claim he is ultimately advancing socialist politics because between his uh, gynecomastia, you know, um, shaking on stream, talking about how we have to vote for Biden and um, endorse political repression within America, after 172 steps... That somehow will help advance socialism. No, you, you have to concretely advance socialist politics. And that means you can't tell people to vote for Biden. You tell people to vote or to get started in building an alternative party or building some kind of alternative political platform. And, and, but, you know, but then again, even theoretically, he's wrong because he, he just thinks socialism is just a bunch of pencil factories, right? Uh, but at the same time, he's not going to open up his own pencil factory. Boss, and open up your own pencil factory. That's socialism, what, isn't it? Wouldn't that be socialism then? If socialism is just cooperative pencil factories, why don't you just open up your own with your money? Then you're doing socialism. You're realizing the socialist ethic in real life. You know, Destiny was right when they were debating that. He was actually right. Destiny was right. Um... You know, uh, if you're calling yourself a socialist and you're not using your influence and money to advance socialistic politics and you're still just complaining about the political landscape, I think that is grounds for, you know, you not to have any credentials on the matter. You know, but yeah, so train what train wreck said was super smart, dude, because socialism without action is a is just a business, you know? Because again, streaming is a business. All media is a business. It functions as a business. You're getting money in. You're getting viewers in. You're investing that money as capital. But what's going to make or break, whether it's just a business and not a vehicle for uh, some kind of uh, political uh, change, is whether or not uh, you're... Ultimately, when you get there, not immediately, because immediately that's stupid. When you get there, you're going to use that money to actually do something. Uh, because let me tell you what I'm doing now, right? I'm using this money. I haven't touched the money, honestly. The money you've given me, I have not touched. I've only used it to gift 100 subs. I gifted the chat 100 subs, which was $500. So I used 500 to give back. That's what I've used the money you've given me so far for. I'm not going to start uh, using the money until I get enough for full time. When I start to get enough money in for full time, um, that's when I'm going to start using that money for subsistence. Just so I can pay rent, pay for food, and pay for the, the basic necessities, right? That allow me to stream. Just pay for everything that allows me to stream the way I do. Um, then we're going to, after we get that and we start getting a surplus over that, we're going to use that to expand infrared. So more showrunners will be able to, um, will be able to do things and we'll be able to just expand infrared in general. After we expand infrared up to a certain point, that's when we're going to start doing real life politics shit, you know, with the money. But you can't reverse it, right? You know, there, there's a like uh, a fanatic who doesn't think is going to be like, oh, 
in order to be virtuous, I have to starve and use all the money I get toward. No, you have to take care of yourself first, right? Because not everybody thinks like you do. You are special. You're a special snowflake vessel, right? Because not everyone thinks the way you do. So if you're not able to support yourself, you're just conceding the battle to your enemies who don't think like you. So the fact that you think in the unique way that you do, you should support. That's why whenever viewers tell me, what should I do? I tell them, support yourself. Support. It's enough that you think in the unique way that you do. So just make sure you can survive. Make sure you can subsist. Secure yourself. You know, make sure your family's secure too, because your family's important, you know? Do not, you know, in history, there's a great history of people sacrificing themselves for a higher cause, whether it's in a war or whether it's in a hunger strike. But you have to understand, that's not a long term thing. That's just like an immediate thing. You know? If you plan on being around in this world and, and fighting for what you believe in, you got to take care of yourself. You got to make sure you're going to still be around. Right? Because if you're not around, who's going to fight for what? If you're not around, right? And if you're living on the streets and you, you know, you, you, you're just always overworked, how are you going to be able to fight for anything? Right? So take care of yourself and make sure you can survive in this world. Otherwise, you're not going to be able to, you know, do anything. You're, and you're not going to have any relevance, you know? Because let me tell you what, the ruling class has it set. They can do whatever they want. They don't have to worry about anything. And their voices are going to prevail. They're going to dominate reality, you know? You need healthy soldiers, yeah. You need healthy soldiers. You don't you can't have this mentality of, you know, otherwise you're just being selfish. You're just trying to feel good, better about yourself because you're more virtuous rather than actually do what's necessary to win you know this sounds kind of capitalist sure you can care for yourself but exposing political ideas in workplace with socialist elements is worthwhile money is fairly important for political action but groundwork is too dude it's not capitalist whatsoever capitalist is just you're going to earn money for its own sake earning money to ultimately be able to use that money you know, and, and let me tell you something. The on-the-ground work, in terms of... Let's weigh on-the-ground work. What does on-the-ground work? What does the net outcome do more? Does it make you feel better more? Or does it actually change reality more? It actually just makes you feel better more. Because you're personally experiencing it. And you're personally experiencing what change you're doing. So it's a very Calvinistic type of... Uh, protestant kind of america you know or catholic good works type of thing you may feel the effects but in the in, from a broader perspective you're not really making a big change whereas using money large sums of money to reach huge numbers of people that's actually going to change way more way more it's going to have way more of an effect uh, way more of an impression and way more of an impact. Uh, yeah, on the ground work needs money and scale to be effective. If it doesn't have scale, it's not effective. And if it doesn't have money, it's not going to have scale. You need money to have scale. Otherwise, it's just an individualistic, masturbatory, feel good type of thing. A person can't wage war against everything he dislikes. True? I agree. I agree. You have to make money. Listen, politics is a business. Yes, it is. You know, all the disputes in the Bolshevik party leading up to it were about the newspaper, and it was about generating revenue. You need to make money to be anything in this world. 
You need money, dude. Money matters. Money doesn't just mean capitalism. You need money to do anything. If you don't have money, yeah. you don't got nothing. Money is the key to anything in this world. Money is alienated human ability. If you don't have money, you don't have access to the human abilities of this world. So money matters. If you can make money, it is your responsibility to make that money. You are not being virtuous by being more lazy, being more complacent, and foreclosing opportunities. And I get most of you can't make money, not because you're lazy, but because you just can't. But if you can, and you're not doing it just because you're lazy, and you somehow justify that by feeling like you're more politically uh, virtuous, you are really uh, betray You're really uh, doing a horrible thing. Well, I would imagine on the ground work would be working within a capitalist system to acquire self sustainability, and then getting workers to back the idea. It will never happen, dude. It will never happen. I have company getting a subsidy from the government to pay for subs and or convince through the role with workers to adopt an understaffed workplace to be paid and all what. I don't even understand what you're saying. Until the company staffs appropriate, what you're saying and what I'm saying are conducive to each other. No, I don't agree with that because you're trying to do this utopian thing of creating a better society within this society voluntarily. And I don't think that's possible whatsoever. You're not going to create a better society within the current society. Um, and the simple reason for that is that the you know the key to socialism is politics there's no voluntary economic change whatsoever you know working within a capitalist system to acquire self sustainability how do you do that then getting workers to back the idea how do you do that which workers you need scale for all of those things you just talked about but if it, if it was just as easy as convincing workers to, you know, to work and as, you know, the, the issue, you're dealing with an issue where people can't even find jobs right now. There's not even jobs people can find. What you're saying only applies to the current workplaces that exist. How do you know the workplaces that exist are even necessary? Do you really think all these bullshit jobs have to last forever for all time? Some of these jobs shouldn't even exist in the first place. Some of these jobs are on the road to disappearing. How do you manage and deal with all those things? You on a uh, ground level, you can't. Socialism is about winning state power. It's always what socialism was about because everyone understands that it is at the level of state power only that society is able to deal with its common social problems that it's facing. And there is no dispute about that among anyone. Everything else is individualism. Um, Groiper DM you. Okay, give him a week off, Gaga. Give Groiper a week off. Give him a week off. Do you think that money can corrupt in the sense that if you become a millionaire, how much would you really care about ML if you throw? That's very much an individual issue. That's an issue of like personal psychoanalytic psychology or something. I don't think money inherently does that, though. I don't. Um, it can, you know, and, and, and it's not the money that does that. It's the social repercussions of the money that does that. It's like, you know. It's the way in which you start to adopt ideas and friends and kind of environments that make it more convenient. But it's all a matter of discipline because, you know, for example, the great revolutionaries of history, almost all of them were, they had access to huge sums of money. Huge sum, whether they were in power or not. You know, Lenin was sent to Russia on a train with gold, you know, bars and all this. So, 
There's nothing inherent about money that corrupts you. Um, but that's definitely uh, any political figure or partisan or revolutionary needs to have personal discipline. Obviously, they need to have personal discipline. They need to make sure that they they are focused, um, and they don't forget. From experience, I used to work for an entertainment union, and the members themselves cared less about union meetings. St should they vote on giving their rights to strike for more vacation days? Yeah. Did you give examples of how famous leftists can use their cloud and money to build IRL power? I think Jimmy Dore does this. I think Jimmy Dore uses his money to and influence to promote things like movement for a people's party you might not uh, agree with movement i know there's a lot of drama around movement for a people's party but that's an example uh, an example was what the tyt and kyle kalinsky did with the justice democrats now obviously how that turned out is very clear to us ultimately but the form of like doing that is what i'm talking about like the way in which they were able to use their cloud and money to prop someone up in and of itself. It doesn't even matter if it was a, even if it was a right winger who did that. It's still the same thing. It would still be considered the same accomplishment to me. It's to, so I'm not saying like, oh, when people go, oh, look who that turned out. It has nothing to do with like the way in which you can use clout and money to affect political change. It's a very clear example of how you can do that. Rather than redefining communism, I think a better path is to construct a new political concept. I don't know. How could we get people elected without being in a party but keep them in check? I, 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 that's a very good question. I think um, you would need to... Well, here's the issue, right? There's a few issues surrounding AOC. Um, there's so many factors surrounding AOC's kind of betrayal. I'll name a few. One of them was that there was a rivalry between the mainstream media and the so-called progressive media. As far as keeping AOC in check, the mainstream media dominated. You know, it's like a feedback loop. Like, no one expected AOC to get as big as she did. So when all of these mainstream media outlets were like, talking about AOC and defining her narrative, that came as a shock to both her and everyone else. And, you know, no one expected it to get that way. So the first thing you do is you need to be prepared for that. You need to be prepared for the way in which the mainstream media is going to try and define who you are. And, you, sh you you know, don't be shocked and, oh, Michael, I didn't expect it to get this big. Well, no, you need to think in terms of scale at that level. Definitely. You need a feedback loop where you can rechannel the infamy and the, you know, the fame that you're generating. So you can put that back into, you know, for example, neither TYT nor Kyle Kulinski capitalized on the fact that they founded the Justice Democrats, even though that's what, have, that's what they should have done. Another thing is that the Justice Democrats, I think they kicked out the TYT people, even though... I think that the TYT should have had more control over the Justice Democrats, definitely. Just to ensure that they could capitalize on AOC's uh, fame and infamy. Because the Justice Democrats didn't have their own media platform to be able to capitalize on it. You know, Justice Democrats who, right? They became irrelevant. Even though they were the ones who propped up AOC, they didn't gain anything from her rise you know so that was an issue another issue though it wasn't only that kind of stuff it was also that there was actually a theoretical and ideological crisis facing the left the reason aoc made the betrayals she did is because uh it was all too convenient for her the, the excuses she was able to draw up made sense to her actually i don't think she was intentionally deceiving people i think that's just what made sense to her you know like oh trump is the right winger i'm a left winger and it just all fell into place and made sense to her so there you had that too you know you had the lack of ideological and theoretical clarity as well 
Yeah, the people in Justice Democrats that came to replace Kyle and Je and uh, Jenk were awful. That's what I mean. Um, listen, uh, I love the tweet that I read that said Lenin was a media theorist because it's true. It was all about that newspaper. The Bolshevik Party was all about that new. The whole cradle of the Bolshevik Party. They didn't begin first with principles and, you know, like um, some kind of organization. They began with that newspaper. That was the most important thing. Were you a fan of the Green Party? No. It was that newspaper. So I think people really underestimate the importance of mass media. And more pathetically, it's so disgusting because Leninists whether of the Trotsky's variety or otherwise, will look at what the Bolsheviks did with the newspaper and they'll literally replicate that as though newspapers literally in 2021 are more pure and more true and that the internet and the TV is some kind of satanic overgrowth. Well, you need to use the internet. This is not an age of newspapers. This is an age of the internet. This is the age of social media. This is the age of streaming. You know, they think that they literally still use newspapers because they actually think it's like more pure. It's almost like how in Christianity, they literally will ha eat the bread and wine because they literally think like this is what at the time symbolized the communion or whatever with uh, the last supper or whatever like it's literally like they literally think specifically newspapers specifically newspapers are the more pure medium why i mean just think of like did did lenin and the bolsheviks arbitrarily decide that newspapers were the best medium or was that the most mass and advanced form of communication that existed at the time that they were living and operated in you know it's very bizarre and very weird uh, how they have that mentality and they do that kind of shit, you know? I'll write my manifesto in Latin and nail it to the church. <laughs> yeah. Especially fringe publications, there's no real market feedback. Yeah. But then again, leftists, and I'm talking about old leftists, were never really interested in, in winning in the West. They were always interested in being more virtuous. If you really think about it, since the New Deal... Okay, Gaga, I think you should just block him then. Because even if we ban him from the chat, he's still going to DM you. I think you should block him. But, anyway... um. It's very strange because after the new left, leftism became a type of like lifestyle. It became one of those like, you know, those Hindu gurus that came to America and taught people to like go to the desert and do yoga, how to pursue the virtuous life, how to pursue the most fulfilling, you know, life and path. That's what it's about. It's not actually literally about fighting in a class struggle and winning political power, it's about fulfilling some kind of personal need. That's what leftism is in America.